Okay, today is October 24th, 2011. We're on lesson 3.4. Uh, textbook page 156 and blue notebook 154. The first example gives us an equation that represents a company's profit margins. So this equation lets them know how much money they're going to make depending on how much of a product they sell. We're going to say that this company, well, in the example, they sell skateboards, okay? So X is the amount of skateboards they sell in thousands, okay? So X is, is, so X is amount of skateboards in thousands, also known as so, in order to find out where a company breaks even or how they're profitable, we're going to just roughly estimate this graph. So, I'm going to rearrange this a question. We normally put the variable with the highest exponent first when we're ordering a polynomial. So, what that means is this equation, we have negative 14x squared. So, that will be our first term. Then we just drop in the amount of degrees. The next one is 133x Finally, minus 63. So what I mean by ordering this is this had the highest exponent, so we put this term first. The variable then had the exponent of 1. I put it second. And then it could be said that the variable here is to the power of 0, which is equal to 1, right? So it disappears. So we always order by the variable of the highest exponent. So I've rearranged this question. And using what we know from graphing parabolas, our standard form of parabolas, if you guys remember, is ax squared plus bx plus c. In this example, our a is a negative number. So what does that mean for the parabola? It's going to be opening downwards. So we're going to quickly just draw a rough sketch of this. OK, so since we know a is a negative number, that means we are going to have some parabola that is facing downwards, OK? Now, on the x-axis of this parabola is going to be our x, so the amount of skateboards they sell. Amount of skateboards. And y is going to be their profit. That's what P stands for, so how much money they make. Now, they want to know when this company is profitable. What that means is they're going to have some parabola, because this is a quadratic equation. The parabola is going to have 2x intercept because it's facing downwards, okay? And what that means is at some point, whatever the x-intercept is, whatever that amount is, is when the company starts becoming profitable. And then eventually, after they've sold too many, they're no longer profitable, okay? So what we're actually looking for are the two x-intercepts, which we know how to find which means we're going to have to factor this equation to find the two x-intercepts. So we take our equation, px, negative 14x squared plus 133x. So in factoring, the first thing we do is we take out the greatest common factor. So, greatest common factor. We're looking for a number that all three of these terms is divisible by. Okay? Uh, we'll quickly check 14. 133 divided by 14. Doesn't work. Not a whole number. Okay? I'm going to tell you that 7 is going to work. And 63 by 7 works. So, the number we're going to take out is 7. And because x is technically negative, I'm going to take out negative 7 so that it becomes positive because we're used to factoring when x is positive. So I'm going to remove negative 7, which means I'm going to divide each term. Okay, so we're dividing each term by negative 7. 
So our first term, negative 7 divided by, or sorry, negative 14 divided by negative 7 is 2x squared. Positive 133. So 133 divided by negative 7 gives us negative 19. Negative 19x. And negative 63 divided by negative 7 gives us positive 9. Okay, so now what we've done is we've simplified the numbers we have to factor. And we're going to be factoring these terms in here. So I'm just going to move this over a little. When we go to factor it, sorry, I'll get rid of that part. I'm going to look for the factors of our A, which are 2, and the factors of C. Factors of 2 are 1 and 2. Factors of 9, 1 and 9, and 3 and 3. We know we're going to have to multiply our columns, then add them together to get our B term, which is negative 19. Okay. So you guys have already figured out. We have our columns. If we multiply 2 by 9 and 1 by 1, we get 18 and 1. And because they're both, sorry, because it is a negative number we're trying to get to, we're going to need both of those terms to be negative. Okay? So when we go to put them into the brackets, first we have to bring down our greatest common factor, which is negative 7. Then I'm going to put in my first terms. My first terms are going to be 1x and 2x, or just x because the 1 isn't that important. Now, here's the tricky part again. Because we multiply 2 by negative 9, the negative 9 has to go in the other column. So negative 9 goes in this one. And because we did 1 by negative 1, our 1 and negative 1 have to go in opposite brackets. So we have our negative 1. So I've now factored the terms. And the reason I factor them is because we're trying to find an x-intercept. So remember, we started with p at x. And we can replace p at x with just y for graphing, because y is our other axis. And what we're trying to solve is our x-intercepts. So if you guys recall, to find an x-intercept, We don't know what our x value is, but we do know the y value is what? Zero. 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 When we're finding x intercept. So I'm going to be replacing y with zero. So zero is equal to negative seven minus nine, two x minus one. Okay. And now what I need to do is I need to set either of these brackets equal to zero. Now, I don't know if I brought this up with you guys before, but technically this is another term here, right? We don't set it equal to zero. It just kind of sits on the side. It doesn't seem to do anything. The reason I don't do anything with that is because if I were to divide both sides by negative 7, anyone wonder what I'll end up with? Zero equals x minus 9, 2x minus 1, okay? So what I ended up doing is I divided this whole side by negative 7 and this side by negative 7. When I did the right side of the equation by negative 7, what ends up happening is this negative 7 and this negative 7 cancel each other out. So I'm only left with the two brackets, which is what we have down here. 0 divided by negative 7 is just 0. So now that I've gone to there, I need to split this equation. 0 equals x minus 9, and 0 equals 2x minus 1. I need to solve for my two different x's. When I bring 9 over, x is equal to 9, or I bring 1 over is equal to 2x, x is equal to a half. So we're going to try to make sense of this now when we go back to our graph. Our two x-intercepts are going to be 9 and 0 and 1 half and 0, or 0 0.5 and 0. So we go to plot this on our graph. We'll do our graph by uh, thousands. So 1,000, 
to. So we did our x-axis in thousands. We knew one of the points was at 9 and 0, so here is one of the x-intercepts. The other one was at a half and 0. This is the other x-intercept. So we know we're going to have some graph that goes up and comes back down, okay? So the question is only asking us to determine when it's profitable. So we technically know that this company is profitable between Now, this is in thousands. So what would a half of a thousand be? So they're profitable between selling 500 skateboards and 9,000 skateboards. Okay? Before that, the company's losing money. You guys notice it's in the negative range there. And after that, they're losing money again. They're in the negative range. But anything between 500 and 9,000 skateboards, this company is staying profitable. 509. Okay, so we knew that to get negative 19 out of these numbers, I'd have to add two negatives together. Okay, but that takes a bit of thought and knowledge. Another way to check that is first of all, we needed to get to positive 9. So these two numbers actually have to multiply to positive 9. So our options are either plus 1 and plus 9 or negative 1 and negative 9. These columns have to multiply to that number. Okay? And we knew if we used positives here, we definitely wouldn't have got to negative 19. So the other option is if these were negative, then these two numbers would be negative, and when we add them together, we would have got negative 19. Okay, part B of this question, we've made it up, and it says, when is this company most profitable? So when I go back and refer to my graph, I know my break-even points are 500 and 9,000, but I need to know when they make the most profit, which is going to be where? 45,000. I mean, 4,500. It's going to be at the vertex. Okay? So, in order to find the vertex, remember our formula for axis of symmetry. So our R is our first x-intercept, which is 9 and 0. We'll call that R. And we'll call S our half and 0. So we're going to plug this value in for R and this one in for S. When we put it into our formula, we get 9 plus, I'm going to put 0 0.5, okay? We're just going to do it with our whole numbers. We're not going to use thousands right now. We're going to use our ones. 9.5 divided by 2, which is 4.75. So in the thousands, what would this mean? Four thousand seven hundred fifty skateboards. So let's refer this back to our graph. What that means is that 4.75. This is our axis of symmetry, which is roughly here. That's when they're going to make the most profit. When this company sells 4,750 skateboards, that's when they'll make the most profit. But we need to know how much they're going to make also. Okay? So at 4,750 skateboards, when they make the most money, I'm going to take this here because that's going to be the X value of our vertex. So 4.75 is the x value. I need to find the y value, which is the amount they make. So I'm going to plug that back into either the factored form or the standard form. In this case, we'll do the, it doesn't matter, you still get the same answer. I'm going to do the standard form this time. Hey. So this is our x value, 4.75. So the profit is asking us at 
how much profit will they make? So we are going to plug in 4.75 for both of the x values. And we're going to solve. Four point seven five square times negative fourteen. It's negative three one five eight seven five. Plus one hundred and thirty three times four point seven five. Six three one point seven five. Minus 63. So what I did there is I did all of the operations here and all of these operations to get those numbers. We're finding the y value of the vertex. We already know the x. We're going to find the y now. And we add these numbers together. So minus 315.875 and then minus 63. 252.875. And we're going to say profit is in the thousands also. So this value here, sorry, our vertex, let me write it down so I know what it is. 252.875. We're going to round this to 253. 253. Okay, that's where the vertex of this equation is. And it's also in thousands. So how much money do they make at their most profitable? $253,000 of just profit, okay? Now, here's a thinking question. If they were to sell more than $253,000, what is their profit going to be? It's going to be lower. They're less efficient. This is when the company is most efficient. 